So getting to kind of why did we do all of this? It's to get good performance. And we got good performance. So for one chassis, we can read at about 15 and a half gigabytes per second. Um, so almost four gigabytes per second per node. We write at roughly half that, and part of that is that the writes to the storage are slower. Part of that is that we do have ECC cal calculations. Part of that is that we have a two-phase commit that's required for the clustered, clustered writes and so forth. We'll get that faster in the future too, I'm sure. Um, this was measured with FIO on a four-node cluster. Um, operations per second, and these, this was an outside group that did this, and they used something that's similar to spec SFS. You can read these as basically NFS operations, and our internal um, runs are very in the same ballpark. We get about 250,000 um, operation file NFS operations per second per cluster, sorry, per chassis, um, with less than a millisecond of latency per operation. And this was driven with eight clients, so it doesn't take a lot of clients to get up to that. Just out of curiosity, is there any significant variance in the performance characteristics of the different uh, protocols? Yes. The NFS, uh, C. Yep. It was not CIFS, I hope. Uh, uh, SMB. At SM, SMB. Yeah, at S SMB, um, I don't have the numbers with me right now, but it's on the order. I, I want to say it's on the order of half of this. Okay, so there is, com there is some variance that we need have to treat specifically when you're doing your sizing right. based on the protocols that you plan to be using. Yep, okay. and other protocols have different, HDFS has extremely different performance characteristics, for instance, than this. Okay. Um, we do get pretty near linear scalability, so it scales up very well. To, to be quite honest, we have not tested a 144 node all flash in our lab because we have not been able to get enough of the 15 terabyte SSDs that the, the we can keep. Up. <laughs> yeah, that any, any time that we get enough of them, then customers have this unreasonable expectation that they'll be able to buy them. You know, if you didn't have so many customers, that would be a problem, so just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but we, do, we have <clears throat> tested a 144 node cluster that has a significant proportion of all flash and just to verify that our scalability is not yeah, being adversely affected by anything here. And to some extent, you know, looking at our, if, if you look at our architecture in detail, it's pretty obvious why we get near the linear scalability. It's because we don't have any central, central point, and any read or write is just selecting a small subset of the disks and communicating peer to peer. Um, a good example of the kind of things that we do in our test lab that are focused around client environments is 4K video streaming. So we knew that 4K was something people have been asking us for for a long time, and we wanted to finally be able to deliver that to them now that they're looking at deploying that. Um, this is a little different because it's more sensitive to both latency and jitter than um, just streaming data in for an application that's processing analytics or whatever. And something else that makes it more challenging is that the, the formats that most people are using for video editing store each frame as a separate file, which means that you can't simply say, oh, I'm going to read, you know, 10 megabyte, you know, 10 megabyte chunks and I'll read like the next thousand of them ahead of them. Um, so we have a file name based prefetch mechanism that comes into play there where we actually detect Oh, you're reading file. You're reading a series of files that look like they are probably video streams, and we're going to predict the next file names that you're going to use and prefetch those. It actually works really well, um, and that's <laughs> improved as part of this because we found cases where it didn't work well enough, and it became much more obvious with the 4K streams. Um, so, in terms of this particular set of tests, we did full 4K, meaning. 4,096 pixels across, 16-bit um, HDR, 24 frame per second, typical movie thing. So the frames wind up being 51 megabytes. So if every file is 51 megabytes. Um, and we can read eight streams from a chassis or two, two streams from a node with no drop frames, um, everything coming out. So you can be playing back. Effectively, you can have, you can be playing back uh, left to right on a video workstation, which is what people need to do for their editing. And in terms of writing, 
we don't write as quickly, obviously. We can sustain writing at 12 frames per second, which is fine because we're not recording directly into here. We're pulling the data in, applying some sort of transfer transformation, which generally is fairly slow anyway, and then pushing it. But we can still get four streams per chassis on the right. So we can basically we can support four editing or effect stations per chassis, one per node. So in a full cluster, you could have 144 people sitting and working simultaneously on your, on your data. Um, one other example, and this comes out of our streaming analytics group actually ran these tests. Um, this is using Kafka, which is a data broker. So it, it lives basically in between generators of data, which might be the Internet of Things. It might be uh, incoming email messages. It might be stock trades. Whatever you want that's generating a lot of incoming data. And it effectively acts, acts as a buffer between the incoming data, which may be very bursty, and some collection of applications that are processing that. And that processing could be near real time or it could be batched up. And basically what Kafka does is it sits in the middle. It guarantees that you can absorb that data even if it's coming in in an extremely bursty fashion without losing any. And then it provides the data out to as many consumers as you want. And with one F800, and this really means one F800 chassis, um, we can saturate the CPU on the consumer side for up to 16 CPUs. So we can have 16 CPUs that are all pushing data in at full speed. Uh, we can so support a million transactions per second. And this is with an average size on the order of 250 bytes. This is all being done over straight NFS. So it's effectively doing 250 byte random writes into the system. And 21 milliseconds average latency, I'm not sure what that's measuring. I'm told that it's good for Kafka. <laughs> um, and one, one way that this, one, one reason why we can get more transactions per second here, you may be wondering, why is this a million transactions per second? We are doing 250,000 NFS ops. Um, one reason is that the NFS ops, we're doing 4K, 4K reads of writes. Here we're doing smaller writes, which we can support more of because the network isn't becoming a bottleneck. And the sec a second thing is we're not doing metadata operations. So those are more expensive from CPU perspective. So we can have a, a, single, a single F800 chassis can support eight um, aggregators of incoming data pushing data in, except a million, uh, a million bits of information per second that then can be read out to somebody else who's actually analyzing all of that data as it comes in. So just a quick summary. Um, on, we didn't really talk about the benchmarking we've done for EDA, but we did a lot with both in-house and with our customers. And the total time that it takes to run a typical EDA workflow is about 25% lower with this. It's not more because storage is not always the bottleneck for every phase of that. Um, life sciences, they were pretty happy with our performance before. They're still happy with our performance now. <coughs> it can now give them twice as much capacity um, in the same space. For media and entertainment, we can support 4K workflows, editing directly off of your NAS storage. You don't need to pull it to a local drive do your editing and work and then push it back, which was a common 4K workflow in the past. And on the enterprise in general, we're doing things faster and allowing people to be more efficient. So I'll open it up if we've got a little time for questions, I guess. So I noticed you guys haven't been in Spec SFS benchmarking uh, of recent time. Yep. I mean, the last one you did, I think, was 2008. 2014's been out since the end of 2014. Yeah, we're in, internally we're running um, 2008 and 2014. Our EDA work was all optimized with um, a mix of customer workloads and the spec 2014 EDA um, profile. And I believe that- There's an EDA profile for spec 2014? Yep. Yes. And I, I believe that the, <coughs> I, I'm not sure if that one's re released yet, but I know that we have it internally. Ah, it might not be released, okay. Um, 
And I, I believe that we are in the process of preparing submissions, but I don't know where, where along the line that is. That's a different group. I think so, it's I mean, called the software build profile. Yeah, I mean, back when you did a 140 node configuration, you were supporting like 1.1 million IOPS across uh, NFS throughput operations yep. per second. And if I, if I do the math right, this is like nine times that effectively. Yes. If you're doing a spec SFS 2008 right. kind of transaction. Yeah. yeah, it should be about 9, mil, 9 million spec SFS yeah. Yeah. 2008 ops. 2014 is a little more complicated because there, yeah, there are world. more profiles. Uh, and there's not a lot out there actually, but more uh, scale out um, benchmarks than, than not, really, yep. surprisingly enough. So That's I thought you guys would be a perfect example of that. Well, ho hopefully we'll get some in the near future. <laughs>